The long-awaited big update that we've been waiting for for so long, this is patch 24.0.3, uh, let's go over it together for Horse and Battlegrounds. Starting with some armor changes, Lich Baziel has been moved to armor tier 1, and Dancing Daryl, Deathwing, Elise, Guff and Sneed have moved to armor tier 2. I usually don't pay too much attention to these, but now there's some actual hero changes as well. So Lich Baziel, who just moved to armor tier 1, uh, her old hero power used to deal 2 damage to yourself and you got a coin, now you take 4 damage? Which is pretty insane, but you gain 2 gold this turn only. Uh, now, this turn only, I think this is weaker in general. You could just stack gold now and choose a turn to pop off, which is generally speaking better. Now, you can't stack gold. You can only hear power the turn that you want to do something, and you take 4 damage for it. So, essentially, whether you take 2 damage and gain a coin, or 4 damage and take 2 coins, is the same deal. But it's now 1 turn only, so it's actually worse. Uh, the thing is, you can take a lot of early damage, you can put yourself super low and have an insane board. Having 2 gold every single turn more than your opponent early on is a massive deal. I think the main buff is that you want to play this with demons. You want the um, Katra Natir, I think it's called, right? The free drop demon that makes you immune, because uh, then you don't take damage. So as soon as you find the free drop demon, uh, you're gonna take 0 damage for 2 gold a turn. So you basically get plus 2 coins a turn, but you need demons and lobby, you need to find that card. I don't know, I don't like this change, I don't think it will change the hero a lot. If you see any synergies here, if you think this is broken, then let me know down below and explain to me why. <laughs> Guff was the second highest win rate hero uh, in the meta, now I don't think the hero is that good, but in lower ranks it seems like it is. Now instead of giving a friendly minion from each 7 tier plus 3 plus 2, it now gives a friendly minion from each 7 tier plus 2 plus 2. So they brought down the stat gain a little bit, so it's less easy to skill with and, and I guess lower lobbies but it didn't really see play or that much play in you know higher competitive lobbies I don't know I think Guff is just gonna get a bit worse now but maybe still see roughly the same amount of play Deathwing now instead of giving all minions plus two attack it is plus three attack which uh I mean Deathwing has been a decent tempo hero over the years always been in the game and with max beast like it's okay uh, I think the same thing is still gonna apply. It's gonna be a little bit better, so you might see, depending on if the meta shifts or not, you might see more Deathwings in the lobbies with the right tribes in that have Death Rattles and Divine Shields. And now you use this hero power, probably not to build the composition, but usually just to be strong and level up to higher tiers and then use that momentum to build a composition. So he might see some more play, even in higher ranks. I know that sometimes Deathwing can have decent win rates, so let's see if this will be the push that this hero needs to be viable again. Kalta Sinstrider, this has been a useless hero for a while, so instead of every third minion you buy gets plus 2 plus 2, it's every third minion you play gets plus 2 plus 2. So I, I thought about this for a second, uh, or even longer than a second, uh, but I don't really see how this changes him or improves him, because I would assume this is supposed to be a buff. Um, I guess you don't have to like buy bad cards now that accidentally get buffed, you can kind of order the way you play it. But very often early on, the card you buy, you're gonna play them in their, that order anyway. Um, so I'm a little bit confused, I don't think this is gonna make Kaltas playable all of a sudden. Now a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Firestone, which is a deck tracker that I'm currently using. The amount of stats that this offers is pretty insane, from of course seeing when you're gonna get 99% lethal, to all the minions that are in the lobby, additional stuff like your lost opponent's board, and a bunch of other overlay features like seeing one opponent's level and triple, and then the application itself where you can see your previous fights, you can simulate all of these battles and see the outcome if you would change something, you could track your MMR. You can see perfect boards and perfect games from other people and my game is included that I had yesterday. There's a lot of things here to explore and to mess around with. If you want to try it out yourself, it's completely free as well. Check the link in the description below. Back to the video. Elise Starseeker. So when you upgrade Bob's Tavern, you get a recruitment map, which was really bad. It's now going to be a one cost hero power. Discover a minion from your tavern tier, cost one more after each use. At first I thought this was bad, because you can press it, it costs 1 gold to discover from your tier, not bad. But it's 2 gold, then 3 gold, then 4 gold, and then you just have no hero power anymore for the rest of the game. So, I'm not quite sure, there might be some leveling curve that works with this, but I'm pretty sure you just hold this hero power until you're tier 4, 5 or 6. If you power level, this could be really good actually. If you go 4 and 4, so you just go all the way to tier 4 on turn 4, then you're on 7 gold. You can buy a card, buy a card, hero power if you want, and discover a 4 drop. That could be a line, although it's just worse than playing Togwaggle right now. But probably you just want to go to tier 5, tier 6, and then start hero powering, and just getting cards from higher tiers. Uh, I'm not sure if that's good enough, because again, you have no early game really. Uh, we saw Elise in the past being good with a 2 gold map, because you could level every turn, just discover a card from your 7 tier for 2 gold. But if it keeps scaling up after you use it, 
I don't know. I might expect people to say this is incredibly strong, but I'm on the fence about it. I think it's gonna be sometimes Harling, but not very consistent. Now, Sneed, also an awful uh, hero right now. It is Death Rattle, Summon a Random Minion from a lower tier. tier. Now it's give a minion Death Rattle, Summon a Random Minion from a tier lower. What's the difference? Summon a Random Minion from... It's, it's the same effect, right? I think it's just a rewording. I don't think this is a buff or a nerf, it still does exactly this. Yeah, just a rewording, so this hero is still awful. Unless I'm missing something. Oh, this is only a clarifying text change, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of sad to see that because this hero is still pretty bad. Minion changes. Gar is now back and Grisbot is back. Grisbot, we see a change here that we'll look at in a second. But Gar might make elementals uh, a lot stronger. This card was super oppressive because if you find it early, it's super easy to get the health up to 100 or 200. But with the introduction of Leroy, now suddenly, uh, countering uh, a big taunt it has been it has become really easy. So maybe it's fine to see this card again. This was the main reason why Elemental snowballed so much on tier six. We'll see if that will still be the case, but I think there is going to be a bit more of a check now with how much more scaling there is on lower tiers and how many ways that you can counter a big taunt now. Uh, so Grisbot is finally back. Let's see the change now. So it used to be give plus three plus two after friendly minion loses the vine shield, but now. It is after friendly minion induces divine shield, give it plus two plus two permanently. And also it lost divine shield itself, which is a big deal. So they kind of tuned down the scaling a little bit. Um, it's still really good. Like this is still really good, especially the health gain, because the big deal is if you have mackerels and they start bouncing and, and getting a lot of stats, if they have a lot of health, they can value trade. If a mackerel value trades, it keeps going nuts. So the scaling is still incredibly good. Uh, but it not having a shield means that it can get sniped now. It doesn't skill itself because it used to be an insane tempo triple. You just play this on the board, it skills itself, which is disgusting. Uh, but now you might get less value out of it and it might be tougher to get online without just dying on the spot. I still think it's a good card. I think you will still see Greasebot comps and you will still see Max because Max are still good. You still see Max in the lobbies right now. So you might see Max being one of the top tier comps again. But you have to be a bit more careful and not every lobby is just going to be won by Greasebot, I'm pretty sure. So I think this is an okay change. You might have to nerf the stat line again. But probably not, because then it's just a tier 4 Greasebot. <laughs> now Lilreg moved from Terminator tier 6 to Terminator tier 5, which is a big deal. Moving the major, like, main scaling of elementals down an entire tier is big. We also saw Gar being back, but Gar is a 6 drop, so it's not on the same tier as Lilreg, but still. Now finding early Lilreg might be good. And the main reason why is because it's tier 5 together with Bran. One thing is that when you play big elementals with Lilreg, I love slapping a Bran in it because suddenly uh, the 5 drop elemental with Battlecry put elementals in your hand uh, becomes incredibly good. It's going to supply you with a lot of stats. You have Smogger going to supply you way more stats. I love playing a Bran Lilreg elemental comp um, and I feel like it's going to be a thing again. I feel like this will see play again. And now there's also if you triple good cards on 6 that you can hit besides Genie, which is uh, the Taunt Gar. Or you could level to 6, but uh, yeah, I it might uh, might be good now. Hot take, it might still be trash, but I'm pretty sure this will see play. Oh, Genie also changed. So you have another random elemental and add a copy of, of it to your hand. Now it is definitely add another random elemental to your hand and summon a copy of it. So they changed the wording, so it adds to your hand first and then summons. Uh, this means that you will now receive a copy of the elemental in your hand even if you can't summon it. So in case you play like a Baron and you have a full board, you will still get two elementals from it, but only summon one on the board. So that's decent. It's like sometimes Genie board space is a little bit awkward again with that Baron, but now you just guarantee you get value, which is a small bonus, I guess. Now Chroma Wing, which has been the most oppressive, stupid card we've had in the game for a while, finally changed. Uh, old one attack, one health, and you know, it gets plus one plus one for every dragon when you level. Now it is a one four, so it got three extra health. After you upgrade your tavern tier, gain plus one attack for each friendly dragon. Which is obviously worse, but basically instead of getting plus one plus one, it now gets plus one attack. So we know that Ysera can get like 70-70 attack dragons. It can now still get like 70 attack, like guess eight health or four health dragons on the board. Is that good enough to still play Ysera and force this dragon strat? I'm not sure, probably not, because the health is really relevant. But still, getting like 60 to 70 attack Chroma Wings on your board with Nadina is pretty good. Uh, now, it doesn't value trade in the mid game, you might just die. So, I think the card is not horrible. I think this could still see play, because it's a 1-4 and it becomes a 4-4. And, like, that's a good stat line for a 1-drop. So, uh, I, I think this is a good time for 1-drop. Like, decent stat line, decent effect. Uh, but it's not going to be as oppressive anymore as it is. 
But again, I feel like it, there is probably some way to abuse it if if we just look at, you know, the history of one drops, but I hope not and I hope this will now be fine to play in the game again. They also nerfed the Dark Moon prize a great deal. Instead of reducing the tavern by 6, it will now reduce by 5. Okay, I, this card did see quite a bit of play, so this reduction makes a little bit of sense. Well, no bug fixes. Cool! Very nice. Well, hope you enjoyed this little patch breakdown. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, all that bullshit, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>